what's going on YouTube and welcome to episode 6 of my Beginner's Guide to Xcode series. So in this episode what we're going to discuss are the different objects and how you use them. So in our application so far if we head over to our main storyboard we haven't really got too much going on. We've got a button that goes to a view controller and a button that returns you to the previous view controller. So if we look here on this right hand side panel, if you don't have this, remember use these buttons up here to make it appear and disappear. So if we just make this slightly larger, you see that we have these different objects under this tab here. So what do they do? So there's quite a lot here and you may recognize some from iOS. So, oh, sorry. Um, if we just have a look at our view controllers here, we've, we're using so far a button, two buttons, and a label. So we have a label, which we know is just a small sized sort of text view. We have a button, which we can make perform functions. We've got a segmented control, which displays multiple segments, as it says here, and a text field. So a text field is what you'd use to type in something, so just a little sort of text bar, click on it, type in some words, and whatever you type in sends an action message to whatever you set it up to do. We have a slider, so you could use these for controlling the volume of whatever, and we have a switch, which you can make do whatever you want. An activity indicator, which most of you should know from the iOS, it just shows that it's loading, a progress view, similar sort of thing. Page control, so you can swipe sideways and you have these little dots that are highlighted depending on which page you're on. Stepper, so add units, minus units, Table view, table view cell, quite a lot of these, uh, different cells, and an image view. So what you do with an image view is if we go to our second view controller, if we just drag it in, we can just make it whatever size we want really, drag it around. And if we just go over to the attributes, you can choose which image you want. So you'd have to drag and drop an image into your app, and I'll show you how to do that in the next video. And we have a text view. So what a text view is, is instead of having just what you would have here, a label, you can actually have a scroll view with it. So you can have a lot more text in it. It's not just one line or a couple of words. It's a whole sort of uh, paragraphs, a lot, a lot more text. Um, a web view, which is where you can embed actual websites to your uh, app, so people can use the websites to do whatever they need to do on it. Uh, map view, similar sort of thing, has a map implemented into it. A scroll view, which you also can use to obviously make your app page longer, and you just scroll up and down. Date picker, picker view. An iAd banner view, which are very helpful when, say, you've got a, an app that's free on the market and you want some help just paying off your annual fee. So if you just drag this iAd banner in and set it up, what Apple will do is they'll have ads being displayed there, and whenever someone clicks on them or however that process works, you'll gain money. And the GL Kit view provides decent default implementation of an OpenGL ES aware view. Multi-touch gestures, so they're quite a bit more advanced than what we'll probably be going into this series. Um, a view, so your view controller may not have a view yet, so you might have to add one of them, but that's not really what we're going to be doing at the moment. Navigation bar, so you can have that there and add a title. Uh, navigation item, so a button, search bar, so you can have different cells and using search bar, search for different ones which can link you to a different view controller. Toolbar, similar thing to what we had with the navigation bar, just it goes below and you can add buttons. 
So bar button item, which is a button to go here, drag and drop, but we can't necessarily drag it over to this side, we have to use one of these things. So we have a fixed space bar button. So this is just obviously completely fixed and you can, uh, you, it's not very flexible. So that's why they have the flexible space bar item. And that just goes, stretches it out as far as it goes. You just put that there, shrinks so it's more flexible. And so the fixed ones for more spacing them out equally. The tab bar, so obviously it's a tab bar with different tabs that you can use to go to different view controllers. A tab bar item which adds another button to your tab bar. So it's not all too complicated, just a few more objects you can use and hook up to perform different actions on your app. So I think what we'll do now is we'll just add a couple more buttons. So if we go to our main sort of home view controller here and double click on it, it zooms in. And what we can do here is if we just get rid of this left panel, give us a bit more space to work with. So what we can do is just scroll down and drag a button. So this button can take us to another view controller. So if we just zoom out and drag another view controller, and then double click here and what you can do instead of having to do control and drag you can actually right click and drag and we'll go for push so this gives a different type of transition between the apps so as modal makes the next view controller slide up from the bottom and push is different so I'll be showing you that and we'll add a text view here uh, where it's gone just here so we'll add a text view and it has some default text in there already so we'll just use that for now so if we run the app so press the play button here it should start in the simulator now sometimes depending on the screen size of uh, your MacBook or iMac or whatever monitor you've got it connected to the simulator might be a bit too big so what we could do is click on the simulator make sure it's selected it'll say here iOS simulator up the top if we go to window scale and we can change the size so at the moment it's on 100% change it to 75% or we can change it to 50% but it's got some command buttons to do that so command 3 keeps it at 50% command 2 makes it 75% and command 1 puts it at 100% so if we click on this button that we've just implemented see it's not taking us to this next view controller so it's come up with an error so whatever error this is I'm not going to look into it at the moment but I'm going to assume that it's because we've used push instead of um, modal. So if we get rid of this and click on button and drag and click modal, we can now run the simulator. And now if we press button, it brings up the text 